Hello everyone and welcome aboard. Today I am on an island in the middle of the harbor and I don't mean an island literally, but I do mean an island because we are on an absolute tank of a vessel today, a Lowland 76. I think you guys will really enjoy it. It really is a whole island. It's pretty much a house floating on the water. This vessel and this video today are brought to you by Set Sail Marine. Set Sail Marine is my new boating marketplace. Be sure to check it out. You can use AI to ask it any of your boating questions and get recommended vessels that are good for you in particular to meet your needs. You can also buy and sell your vessels on there and you can list your business on there so people can find you during the sales process. And you'll be able to see this boat's listing over at setsailmarine.com and in the description as well. So go ahead and check that out. And without further ado, let's go take a look at this giant boat. You guys are gonna have to excuse any airplane noise today. I apologize, I'll do my best not to talk during it. But we are under an airport. Feels like every time they build a harbor, they put an airport right next to it. I mean, I'm sure that makes sense because it's better than them flying over people's homes, but it's not good for someone that makes YouTube videos about boats. We are here on the stern of the Lola now to start this video. Entrance here is through the transom. First thing you notice when you step aboard is there's a stairwell on both sides. It's symmetrical. And then in the center here, there's a large lazarette. In this one here, there's a dive compressor, which is pretty neat. Couple fun little tools back here. We have a winch so that you can pull your lines in a little tighter. Access down below to the rudder system. Uh, we have our shore power cables that are controlled through here in these little cabinets on both sides. And then as we head up into the rest of the rear cockpit, we will see a nice little table area with seating for four, as well as the entrance to the salon. On the starboard side here, we have a ladder going up to the flybridge. And then on the port side, we have just a life ring. As we enter the salon, the first thing you'll notice is that it is the full beam of the boat. There's no walkways down the sides here. It takes up the entire beam of the vessel and makes for a huge salon. On the starboard side, you have a couch and seating area arranged towards the infotainment system with the television. We have two little chairs here straddling the entrance to the salon. And on the port side, we have a huge dining table with enough room to feed eight people. As we move forward, we get into a galley that has been completely opened up and a bar on the port side with some nice little bar stools. It really is a sick place to entertain. We come over here, we have everything a normal kitchen has. There's a full-size refrigerator, a modern stove and oven. We have a trash compactor even over there, a sink on this side by the window, so you have a great view when you're washing dishes. And then underneath right here is a actual dishwasher, so you don't have to wash dishes. If we move opposite the galley onto the port side, we will find a full setup bar with its own beverage fridge. On this side, next to the trash can here, there's a microwave down there and more beverage necessities. Overall, a pretty sick salon that's really, really great for entertaining. And if we head down here, down the starboard side, we will find a stairwell. And if we follow the stairwell, we will find ourselves in the main suite. Main suite, big queen size bed right here. Cabinets here along the wall. Bench on that side. Little desk, maybe vanity area over here on the starboard side. We have a hers bathroom that has a tub. And on the other side, we have a his bathroom with a shower. If we move back towards the center of the boat, we'll open up this little secret doorway and find ourselves in the engine room. Now, if you watch my videos, you'll know that we usually don't do the Christian test this early in the video because some people aren't so much interested in the Christian test of me shoving myself behind engines as they are in just seeing the rest of the vessel. However, this boat has tons of space in the engine room on all sides for you to be able to work on whatever you need to work on. It even has enough room for a tool chest and a work bench. So there's really no reason for me to do the Christian test in this vessel. As you can see, there's plenty of space. These are MAN V12 diesel engines with two turbos built in 1985. Above it are two generators, one of them a new Northern Lights Gen. On the port side over here, you can see that there is an exit way, another ladder out of the engine room. So if you get stuck in here, you have option number two. And with that, let's go check out the rest of this vessel. If we head back up the flight of stairs and past the bar and galley, 
we will enter the lower helm station. The lower helm station's pretty neat because it's got a little area here you can sit, you can watch the captain do whatever it is the captain does. It's got electronics throughout the whole thing. It's got some fun old school dials and navigation equipment. It's even got this fun little map of the vessel over here for all of your alarms that tells you and lights up when things happen. Just a really fun system that you don't really see in very many boats anymore. Behind us, there's even a little library with all of the vessels, old manuals and information. And then up here to the starboard side of that is the day head. There are ways to get in and out of the vessel from up here on both sides. Both of them waterproof doors, one on the port, one on the starboard. But before we head through those, let's go down another set of starboard stairs on this vessel and see what we have down here. You will come to a fork in the road where there are three options. You can go forward, to your left, towards the middle of the vessel, or to the right, towards the bow. If we go forward onto the port side, we'll find a VIP suite with a full to queen size bed, little couch area right there, infotainment system, some more portholes, and its own head with a shower. If we make our way back up through and we hang a right, we will go down onto the starboard side bunk room where there is actually four bunks, three currently out, one hanging on the wall right here, and then another of its own head and couch and closet space. And then heading back forward, we enter what would be considered the crew quarters of the vessel. Over here, we have a little area where the people can, kind of like a miniature dinette for the crew, or maybe something that you can make into another bed. If you put a table right here, you can have it be your little dinette. Over here, this is supposed to be the little cruise galley area. You can see it's being used for storage for drinks. Can never have too many of those. And then a little escape hatch here for the crew in case anything happens. Forward, we have their bunk room with a little closet on the wall right there. And not such a bad bunk room. Back here in the center, hidden through this door, is the crew head where you walk through the shower. And then at the other side of the shower, there is a restroom for you. Behind the door here, there is a washer and a dryer and that covers everything down here in the cabin. So let's go upstairs and check out the bow and the flybridge. Now, if we head back up the stairs, we will go out and towards the bow. The bow of this vessel is pretty simple. It's got a nice sun pad up here, some storage for the fenders right there. A couple boxes here for either fenders, lines, whatever you may need. On the port side, there is a boarding ladder. The boarding ladder can be attached on either side, port, or starboard over here around the corner. And then up forward, we have a huge anchor system, something that is just absolutely massive for this size vessel. And while we are up here and I have a plane going overhead, we will look at one of the weirdest features of this boat, but also the coolest, is a bulbous bow. This boat had a bulbous bow added to it sometime after construction to increase fuel economy and it gets really good fuel economy. It gets like a mile to the gallon, which is crazy for a vessel that's 76 feet and 80 tons made out of aluminum. But it's a really impressive feature. It's pretty neat that it has a bulbous bow. It really is like a miniature ship. As we enter the flybridge area, we will come up these stairs on the starboard side again. Quite the trend on this vessel is having a staircase on the starboard side. And we have a nice seating arrangement here. Good table, seats around, a Another sun pad up here that is actually a hot tub underneath, as you can see. Towards the stern, there's a davit and chocks to hold up to a 19-foot vessel on this side and a personal watercraft or like a 12-foot tender over on this side. Now, the unique thing about this vessel, it was really made to go cruising, which is why these two cylinders exist. Underneath are spare props for the boat. So if you ever find yourself throwing a blade or damaging one of your props and you are really far away from civilization, you have a spare. Might be a little hard to get it on, but you got a spare. Moving forward, we have a sick grill area over here on the starboard, a sink over here as well, more seating arrangements on the port side over here, and then you have your main helm station right here. Helm station has new electric transmissions a little bit of a slimmed down setup as down below. Not as many buttons, not as many warnings, not as many electronics, but all you need to pilot the vessel from up here at the flybridge where you have a great view all around yourself. A couple more fun features before we go downstairs and do the stars. This vessel has its own life raft up here that while I would never want to be in emergency, I really want to drop it the 25 feet into the water. I think that would be a lot of fun. 
And then it also has solar panels all along the roof up here, along with all of its other electronic equipment on this arch. This arch at one time did fold down, which is pretty neat. You can kind of see that it's separated right there and that the whole thing was designed to fold down. However, they extended this so that they could have some shade and it now no longer folds down. But what it does do is provide a bunch of solar energy to run the vessel out here on the mooring. And from what I am told on a sunny day in the summer when the days are long, you can pretty much run your refrigerator all summer and you'll have enough power to run all your electronics, your fridges, everything you need. Pretty neat. Nice little name here on the side as we head down the stairs to go do our star review of this Lowland 76. All right, so before I jump into the star reviews, let's give you guys a little bit of a summary. This is a Lowland 76. It is 76 feet. It was built in 1985 by a Dutch manufacturer and naval architect named Mueller. This boat is more or less a miniature ship. It has things on it that other boats would not have for its size. For example, it has a full fire suppression system where you actually use hoses to put out the fire. The vessel is all aluminum. It has a bulbous bow, which is wild. That was added after to increase fuel economy. So this vessel gets about one mile to the gallon. It has twin man V12 engines that were built in 1985. They have a turbo for every six cylinders and they bring this vessel up to about 12 knots cruising speed. It has three cabins plus one crew quarters. It has five heads. And even though it technically only has three cabins, it sleeps eight. It's got this beautiful full beam salon behind me. The master is also a full beam back there in the stern. It carries 3,200 gallons because it was made for cruising. And it even has its own spare props in case you have a crash. Overall, it's a very unique vessel. So let's jump into the stars for it. Once again, just to remind everyone, five is average. This is not high school C, a seven. That's not average. That's not passing here. A seven is actually a pretty exceptional score. For performance, I'm going to give this vessel a six. The reason it gets six for performance is I actually think it's right about average for performance. 76 foot boat that does about 10 to 12 knots cruising. That's pretty normal. The reason I'm giving it a six though and not a five is because it has that bulbous bow and it's super fuel efficient, which is huge. Comfort, I'm gonna give this boat a seven. This boat was essentially built to be comfortable. I mean, you could see it behind me. There's nothing in this boat that you wouldn't even get in a home. As for quality, I'm gonna give this vessel a seven. The reason it gets a seven is because it was built to last. It was engineered very well. It was made out of aluminum. It is an incredibly sturdy vessel that's made to be seaworthy and to cruise the world. The interior components on it, I wouldn't say are anything too fancy. I mean, it's all wood, it's sturdy, it's made well. For that reason, quality gets a seven. For practicality, this boat also gets a seven. I think it is above average in practicality, mainly just due to its size. I think that you can live on this thing or you can take it wherever you want. For those reasons, it is incredibly practical if you are interested in cruising. However, if you're a boater that's interested in like going to a bar on the weekend, then this would not be practical for you because you'd need a crew, you wouldn't fit on the dock and all kinds of other reasons. But for its class, it is an incredibly practical vessel. For value, I give this boat an eight. I know what you're thinking. Eight's a really good score for value. This boat's for sale. This is not an honest review. That is not entirely accurate. The boat is for sale. The boat is a good value. This is an honest review. The reason I say those things is if you go check out setsubmarine.com, you'll see what this boat is valued at, and I think you'll be incredibly shocked that a vessel that is 76 feet and this large is going for this price. So go check it out over there. Come back to me. If you find bigger boats that are in the condition this boat is, for less money, I'd like to know about it. I'll, I'll review, I'll redo the value. So with that, the total stars for this vessel is 35, which is an incredibly good ranking, a good showing for this Lowland 76 full circle. It's a really interesting boat. It's probably not a boat that you'll really find anywhere else. It's very, very bespoke is the new word people like to use for unique things. It is very bespoke. I think it's an incredible vessel. Hopefully it makes for a popular boat review. Thank you for watching and smooth sailing.